holiday coming up? Do you have a holiday coming up? Would you like to go on holiday? Are you considering to go on holiday? Do you really want to go on holiday but you're not sure? Holidays can be a source of joy, relaxation, upliftment, recharging our batteries, which is all wonderful. Exploring. But it can also be and often is or has many sources of frustration, pain, anxious thoughts, disappointments, many, many disappointments. This can be a mixed bag and sometimes can tip to one side <coughs> or the other. Bring your cup of tea, water and hydrate. <coughs> now sit back, relax, <laughs> close the eyes, notice how you're feeling in this moment, clear one nostril and exhale fully, clear the other and exhale. Sometimes we have an opportunity to go on holiday and things just work out from the <coughs> organising, searching, booking. And that's our expectation. Something positive to look forward to. Should be good and positive. And many times there are sources of tension on the looking, on the searching, it can be overwhelming, on the decision making. On the ability to find things and the price the price the price the price is a good price is it affordable can we afford so many decisions and many times we have to do all of that homework on top of all the other everyday obligations and commitments and energy levels Make sure you are nice and relaxed, adjust your body, sit back and relax. Take a slow deep breath into the belly and slowly out. Whenever you, you try to solve it, <coughs> With the attitude of let's try to go with the attitude of I'll do one thing at a time so that our brain doesn't get overwhelmed and stressed. We're also going to pick flexibility and then if it does work, wonderful. And if for some reason at the end things aren't all tally and it doesn't happen, you'll be okay. Because sometimes we really, really want and we look <coughs> but at the end, for some reason or another, for instance, too expensive or not worth, the options are not worth and we feel disappointed that we might have wasted our time or that we might have to accept that it's not happening. And when we have the possibility of a reward, feeling good in some way, form, of shape, shape or form, if we anticipate that if we go somewhere the fact that we explore or see we will all feel better <coughs> and if that doesn't happen we could feel, we can feel disappointed and the disappointment can come in form of frustration, irritation and even anger. We can also become overly controlling, trying to control ourselves and others 
and forcing and demanding. It must happen. Now, when we start going down the road of mass and, and shoulds and being rigid, we start getting a little bit unbalanced and getting the worst out of ourselves and others and the situation. So let's try to do the best that we can to stay flexible, open-minded to the possibility of yes it might happen and the possibility it might not happen but either way we will be okay. eyes. Take a full breath in and slowly out. And then <clears throat> we tend to focus on all the good of the holiday. We tend to think as in the holiday is perfect and staying home is the worst and our brain comes up with um, how bored we'll be how <coughs> unhappy we'll be but the reality is that whatever we do either at home or away on holiday or not on holiday the reality is that throughout that are positive things, neutral things, and sometimes or often negative things. So we might need a certain outcome, for instance, when you go on a holiday we might need, might have a need to switch off from everyday things and problems and have relaxation but on the other hand we might sleep worst because the bedding is not as comfortable and if we have hypervigilant brains we might be waking up to every single noise and movement so <laughs> take a full breath in and a full breath out Breathe in, breathe out. So let's remind our brain <clears throat> that every option has a little bit of everything. Positive, neutral, a negative or negative, neutral and positive. So we look at it with rational mind. either option we will be okay. We might have a preference and we'll do our best to get our preference if it does happen and if it doesn't might feel disappointed and we will be okay. Close the eyes. Relax the shoulders. Turn the head side to side. Slow deep breath and slowly out. Before the holiday, we can get extremely anxious with the uncertainty is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? <clears throat> and if we desperately want to go, we might feel we might not be able to cope. stay or the other way around if we go we might encounter some challenges and that we might not be able to cope and while we might have a hard time coping with certain challenges when we are thinking and not in this situation and solving sometimes can be harder because our brain can automatically assume, especially if you are or have a tendency to have anxious thought, the brain is automatically thinking the worst. But then 
in the moment. We are not taking steps to self and resolve. So that energy just gets stagnant and we are battling with the energy in our body. Because the body, the brain perceives a threat, <coughs> releases energy so that we can use that energy to solve the problem. But the problem is in the future, hasn't happened yet. Unless we have a way of knowing, acknowledging and using that energy towards something else, physically, we can feel worse and worse and worse. We cannot solve a problem that has not occurred or might not even occur. We can prevent it and we can take steps. But we need to find a balanced rate because if you only focus on the things that could go wrong then we can become so anxious and paralyzed <clears throat> and if you feel too anxious for too long that energy builds up builds up and then <clears throat> goes into an explosion of anger tantrum and then if you have too many of those too often and our body doesn't have time to heal, recover and recharge. We could end up feeling depressed because the body just feels I don't have any more energy. That's it. So let's remember and remind our brain perspective. Perspective. No place is perfect all of the time. Every place and every situation and every outcome often either going on a holiday or not going on a holiday has neutrals, positives, bad, neutral and good. Close the eyes. Breathe in. Breathe out. can choose to do our best, find a solution, <coughs> can choose to identify what is it my need and sometimes if there are other people going like family members, what is it that they need? For instance, we might need peace and relaxation or seeing something different to awaken the <coughs> Curiosity, because when we feel curious and when we watch something and do something, we come off our minds. It can also be to have more fun. Or have some vitamin D, some sunshine. Or have access to entertainment that makes us feel temporarily happier or even an opportunity to <clears throat> connect with those that we haven't seen for a while or have more social interactions so if we identify our physical needs our mental needs emotional needs spiritual needs Sometimes we want to connect, sometimes we want some time away. And it's important to find the right balance. Spending time in nature so that we connect with something that is neutral and naturally uplifting. Once we've identified our needs, We might obsessively think this is the solution, it must be this, but that is, if it does happen and it is possible, wonderful, but if it doesn't happen, it can be a source of unhappiness. So 
can we use our flexibility and adaptability? So in what ways can I meet my need without having this specific option? So, so that we're not so dependent on one outcome, I must go on holiday or must stay. So if my need if it's for peace and quiet, either here or on holiday, how can I meet this need of peace and quiet? In what ways can I meet this need? And then allow creativity and solutions to come. The more relaxed we are, the better chance we have to find solutions. So close your eyes. Allow the breath to rise and fall naturally. Just notice it for a moment or two. Notice the belly rising and falling. So if you have a need for fun, in what ways can I increase and do different things that gives me more fun? And if I have a need for connection, in what ways? What different ways can I try to have more connection? And if I want to, perhaps laugh a little more or find a new place and get curious in what ways can I learn or expose myself to something new and different so we are removing the one outcome to finding solutions to our basic needs and the same for others and then finding the right compromise so that we can feel better and they can feel better And we can go, okay, my preferred option is A. But I'm going to be flexible. I'll do my best to achieve A. And if it's not possible, I'll go with second best. Or I'll go option B and I'll do the best I can. I'll intentionally focus on the good, the neutral of the second your eyes. Notice the breathing. Take a full breath in and slowly out. Hear the breathing. Feel your breathing. We might have moments that we need to adjust to the outcome of happening, not happening. And um, <clears throat> we might have a hard time to accept that what we wanted is not happening. Or what we want is actually happening, but there are other things on the way before we can get to experience any joy. Or what we want is happening that our brain is automatically assuming the worst of the situation. So we just have to take one step at a time, one minute at a time, one moment at a time, and recognize anxious thoughts and fears, because our brain is <coughs> comparing to previous experiences, and just acknowledge Yes, there's a possibility that this can happen, and I don't like it, but I have some coping strategies that I can use if that happens. And then we can elicit the coping strategies that we have, just as a deep breathing, spending time in nature, 
writing things down, removing ourselves from the situation, <coughs> being flexible and open-minded, staying calm, making sure we sleep enough so that we are in a better position to deal with the little stresses and to look after ourselves. So it can remain our brain. Yes, that can happen. I survived in the past. So it is uncomfortable. I didn't like it, but I survived. And if I survive in the past, it's a great possibility I can survive it again. Plus I have better resources, better copying skills. And we can even try to remember the lessons we took what would we do differently in those situations so we can have a different outcome? Close your eyes. Close the eyes. Breathe in. Breathe out. Just relax for a moment or two. Notice the breathing. Take a sip. And you might try to evaluate and judge the situation as being the worst. And we can remember, we can try it. We can tell our brain, okay, I'll make an evaluation at the end of it, so that I give myself a chance <coughs> and the circumstances a chance to be fair. Because at the beginning, often we are adjusting to things, we don't have Sometimes we don't have the knowledge or everything and as we go along we learn, we have the benefit of hindsight and then we can make adjustments according to our needs, preferences and what's available and possible. We might go one way, then notice the good and the positive consequences and also the negative and what we want and need and then just, just be flexible and adjust as we go along and just accept that our little wins and little losses on the way you gain some you lose some if you give attention to a then you don't give attention to b if you do a you don't do b so we might do our best to do the things we want to, but also be flexible and tolerant, okay? We might have a tendency for perfectionist standards. I must have this, I don't want to have this loss. This is important, want it all. And while it's good to have it all, sometimes having something means losing something. Doing something means not doing something else. Spending time with one person means not spending time with another. Not doing an activity might mean not doing another. And life is full of conflict of interests, conflict of values. It's just part of life. So, I'll do the best I can. Try to find the middle road, the balance. So now just finding that balance. What is most important in each given moment. Connecting heart, mind, spirit. Either. Just know you just how you feel at this moment. I 
I'm doing the best I can. I'll do the best I can. And whatever the outcome, I'll be okay. I'll be able to cope. To the best of my abilities. And I'm going to choose not to judge or criticise. Simply accept. I'll take steps. And I can. As and when I can. And I'll make peace and accept. As things unfold. But I will equally. Pay attention and notice. The neutral things. And especially. The good and positive. Of each. Situation. And any given moment. And I'll make a full assessment at the end. When we arrive at the place, for instance, might automatically, this is bad and it's going to be worse and I'm not going to like it. Okay, that may be it. But more often than not, there are neutral things that are positive things. It might not be the best in comparison. We don't know because we cannot do two things simultaneously. You might assume that when we are away we always have a good time, but from experience, and sometimes we forget, sometimes we don't have a good time, sometimes it can be worse, and sometimes there are many moments which is not nice. So it's not as perfect as our brain believes that it is. When we go away, it's always perfect. It's not. It's a mixed bag. Sometimes we can have our needs can be met, and then it does feel like more perfection or more perfect because our needs were met. And when we find the balance. And we tend to feel that it's perfect or closer to perfection. But if our basic needs are not met, then we can feel even worse. <clears throat> and then we can have the stresses of the extra cost. So, accepting that in every situation there are and there will be little annoying things, little frustrating things, little disappointing things. But equally if we pay attention in every situation that are also neutral and good and positive and a silver line. Even if we come away with the knowledge the hindsight an awareness of our preferences an awareness of how we function an awareness of what we need and want for instance we might try an activity and realize that it's for us or not for us or for us in a certain degree a certain measure so in the future we can use that knowledge to make other decisions notice your sense of hearing is there any sounds it's quite loud So, whatever you choose to do, and whatever outcome you 
might have to face or deal with or the final decision if you do get what you want celebrate and sometimes the things we need to do get on away just take one step at a time to solve and resolve bit by bit and if you don't get a second outcome just comfort yourself feel the loss but don't get stuck on the loss it can be disappointing sad it can even grieve the loss of opportunity fun feeling good you can even feel resentment we can even feel sad that everyone seems to be going away and having fun and you're not but then just remember that we only see one path someone else might go away it might sound like fun but you don't know if they're having fun and often no one is ever having fun 24 7 so we do the best we can with each situation identify our needs, preferences and then try to be flexible and adaptable and if we choose and if you end up with a second option then we do the best we can and then look forward for our preferred option that in the future there will be opportunities such as I didn't it didn't happen this time, but in the future when I have the opportunity, I will be extra special. I'll savor even more. And if our preferred option does happen, and as we go along, there are disappointments, just... It is what it is. There's no such thing as 100% perfect, 100% all of the time, or all of the time. We just do the best we can for each given moment. Close the eyes. I'm gonna do the best I can with each given in each given moment and with each situation. I'm gonna to choose to be flexible, open minded creative and finding solutions to the best of my ability. And I'm going to focus on the neutral and the good and the positive of each situation. Just so raw, so raw, whatever would be, would be. Don't be too hard on yourself or, and even others if your preferred situation is not happening in this moment. We don't like losses and losses makes us sad. And sometimes that sadness is covered up with um, irritation and anger and explosions. So let's just feel that, accept. But also know that we can cope and it will be okay. And then sharpening our saw and focusing towards the neutral and the good of whatever situation we are facing with. If you did not get your preferred option, big hug, love and comforting words. And if you did get your preferred option, yay, 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 yay. but either way, you'll be okay. <laughs> Bye for now. Make your evaluation at the end. Sometimes we don't go and at the end we feel actually it didn't go. And I feel more relaxed. Because during holiday we take the time to take it easy. And sometimes we might even get away within the area. Do something different within the area. So either way, I will.